Yes, I don't let my dog drink from the lake anymore. Uh, I can smell it when there's a, a discharge from the sewer, and I read about it often, and it, it disgusts me. My name is Matthew Vaughn. Um, I'm the technical coordinator for the Lake Champlain Basin Program. So the Basin Program was formed in 1990 and we exist to coordinate efforts to protect water quality and habitat in the entire Lake Champlain Basin, which is over 8,000 square miles. Um, and it spans from Vermont to New York and up into Quebec as well. We sometimes call Lake Champlain the crown jewel of Vermont because it's so uh, uh, important to us literally on a year-round basis. So in a freshwater ecosystem like the Lake Champlain watershed, um, growth of algae and plants in the lake is limited by phosphorus. Uh, cyanobacteria, or it's a type of a bacteria that's been around really since life began on the planet, um, but when there's an excess amount of phosphorus in the water, it can kind of fuel growth of cyanobacteria to the point where it becomes harmful to our ecosystem and harmful to uh, human uses of the water like swimming or like drinking. So phosphorus is again naturally occurring in the soil and then there's even more phosphorus in the form of fertilizer or cow manure that's added to the soil. Agriculture is responsible for a majority of phosphorus in the lake. When we have a bloom it means that the cyanobacteria is growing to the point where it becomes a nuisance and actually sometimes depending on the conditions of the water those blooms can become toxic actually. And having depleted oxygen levels is really it creates a completely hostile environment for wildlife um, for the fish that live there and then for everything up the food chain that's eating the fish. Uh, about 10 years ago when uh, a few dogs actually died from drinking the water and it may have been due to cyanobacteria toxins. In June me and my friends went to um, North Beach and we like I feel like we saw signs about that stuff that feels like vaguely familiar. When we see cyanobacteria blooms present um, and there's different levels of these blooms when we see even the lowest level we again out of caution usually close these beaches and take a water quality sample in for testing to see if there are actually cyanotoxins present which could be harmful to, to people or pets. Of course it depends on concentrations and exposure to uh, different parts of the human body but in general these are uh, liver toxins and can cause respiratory distress and there's several thousands of different strains of different toxins that can be present uh, throughout the world of cyanobacteria. Well there has to be an amount of regulation but um, at the same time, the farms, uh, you know, farms still need to make money, still need to grow their crops. Vermont is more reliant um, as an agricultural industry on dairy than any other state is on a single commodity. Um, so dairy is really important to the infrastructure of our agriculture and dairy is struggling really hard right now. I definitely think as times change that like, you know, in, like industries have to kind of change with it. So it makes sense that as time goes on, they kind of have to upgrade their systems, even if it's financially expensive to them. Well, the nutrient management planning that I mentioned is one thing that's required of basically all farms now, um, and that includes soil testing and record keeping and all of that. But in terms of infrastructure, the part that's really costly, um, they have to contain any runoff from their farmstead area that might contain phosphorus and be going into a stream or any kind of surface water. Lots of our dairy farmers are in debt um, and have a negative cash flow every year. So to them, the idea of having to install a new catchment system for um, the manure collected from their barn or um, leachate that may be flowing out of their feed storage area, uh, you know, that costs tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars and that's just not money that they can come up with. I'd hoped, frankly, to generate some private charitable support 
there's a little of that, but not very much. Uh, I think um, most uh, donors feel that it's a responsibility of government to clean up uh, an international waterway like that. And U UVM Extension Office and um, the Vermont Agency of Agriculture provide a lot of assistance to farmers in business planning and you know um, their business models as well as helping them reduce their environmental impact. There are a number of government subsidies and why they don't really apply to make sure that there isn't this much runoff is beyond me. A lot of the farmers are aware of the public funding, um, but they're hesitant to use it because they're very conscientious of how public tax dollars are used and they don't want those dollars to be wasted on something that they feel is going to be ineffective or won't be useful in a few years if they go out of business. So it's really important for us to uh, preserve our agricultural heritage and, and uh, engage farmers, not to see them as adversaries in water quality efforts, but as partners. I have heard a little bit about that, and I'm aware that uh, a couple years ago a bunch of uh, junk was dumped into the lake. Some, you know, enormous amount of sewage got in the lake somehow. You're probably referring to um, what we call combined sewer sewage overflows, um, which is a result of um, a type of system that a handful of towns in Vermont and New York use, where um, there's a system that collects both stormwater and sewage from homes and businesses and f funnels it all to wastewater treatment uh, plants. So this is by design so that the, the treatment plants could, could treat more water before it's discharged to, to Lake Champlain. Uh, what we've seen with uh, increased urbanization and as these towns grow, those systems can become overwhelmed by the amount of stormwater runoff and of course by sewage as well. Um, so when we have these occasional overflows, there can be untreated sewage that makes its way into the lake. My dog and I live two blocks from the sewage plant. So at least once a day, we either go right on the bike path or left. So we are fully aware of whenever there's an accidental discharge. And <clears throat> would fines make a, a difference to them? You know, at the end of each fiscal year, if they get hurt that much, um, perhaps they'd think twice about changing some of the things that they do and how they take care of potential problems. But I'm just a citizen, that's all I know. I think there, there have been you know, computer glitches that may have allowed some untreated sewage to make its way to Lake Champlain um, in addition to these combined sewer, sewer overflows, but, but over time many of these communities have outgrown the systems and that's why we're seeing problems today. Sewage spills and that kind of thing are responsible for a very small portion of the phosphorus, um, but they contribute bacteria, which are also really not desirable, especially if you're trying to go swimming. Uh, we had um, people uh, renting cottages on the lake or, or uh, visiting resorts on Lake Champlain and, and seeing the toxic algae bloom uh, right outside their door or right off the dock and uh, that's not likely to encourage someone to want to spend another vacation there. There's, there's certainly been some recent work to show that water clarity um, or specifically a reduction in water clarity can have an impact on tourism, the tourism industry and property values. So that is something that um, we're certainly concerned about um, and tracking as an organization. A few years ago, a high school classmate of mine who lives out of state uh, told me that he and his wife were renting a place on Missisquoi Bay in northern Lake Champlain uh, for a week or so one summer. And he called up when he got to Vermont so we could get together for lunch one day and he said, uh, I'm really enjoying your golf courses, but you know, when I rented a place on Lake Champlain, I thought that, well, I could use the lake, but I can't use the lake. Well, I guess it's more just thinking as if it were your backyard. Um, we see that a lot in Maine, where there's a lot of smaller bodies of water, nothing quite to this scale. Um, but you wouldn't want to see it if that was your backyard. So why would you do that somewhere where it may end up in, in your backyard? In your backyard, <laughs> something so. like that. We've only got one Lake Champlain. They can always make more money. So there, sh there should be fines. There should be something to hold, hold the people accountable for their effect on the environment. You know, the people that would be elected to be in, in charge of all that kind of stuff, the onus is upon them. And they're kind of stuck between a hard place and <clears throat> a rock and a hard place. And I think also, too, like what you guys are doing, like bringing more awareness. Like people just don't know 
what goes on and like what goes into the water and what our contribution to it all as humans is. This is just a social media day and age. Um, so if you want people to know what's going on, they have to take to like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all of that. To me that everyone approach the challenges that we're facing um, with humility and compassion for each other is one of the most important things. Um, that farmers feel the support of their community and also the support to make changes as necessary uh, is really important. We're working on our, our challenges and, and uh, hoping to improve and restore water quality. I'm always optimistic, yeah. <laughs>